welcome to the uh, webinar on re-energizing Karnataka. Um, this is basically an assessment of the renewable energy policies, uh, challenges and opportunity in the state. Um, this was made in association with the Climate Parliament, which is an organization, uh, a worldwide global network which works with the MLAs and people in parliament so that we can actually get renewable energy discussions in the parliaments and with the legislators. Um, this project was done by me, my name is Pooja, in and with um, Meera as my principal investigator and also with an ex-intern, uh, Radhika. So I'll just go on to the first slide. So this will be the outline of my of my webinar. The first thing is uh, why does uh, what is the status of renewable energy in Karnataka and why we need to invest in it uh, some more. My second thing will be the objective and methodology of our work. Uh, the third aspect will be how to promote renewable energy in the state. And the fourth one will be how we can uh, ensure that the environment is such that they can be an easy growth of this technology in the state. So I'll just give you a little background on the state. Um, Karnataka has currently 25% uh, of the installed capacity that is around uh, 4700 um, megawatt is from RE. Um, out of this we can see that wind is the major one with 14 um, megawatt. This graph over here is giving us a potential. So we can see that the wind has the highest potential in the state with, with around 14,000 megawatt. Uh, followed by solar, which has around 10,000. Um, but currently, um, only we only have around 4,600 megawatt being used right now. Um, so that uh, and 10% uh, of the electricity that goes to our utilities comes from RE. In this, we will not uh, focus on small hydro because that has some sensitivity. It's, I mean, environmentally, uh, it is in very environmentally sensitive areas of the western. Cards. So we will not look at that, but we will look at wind, biomass, and solar. Okay, so why does Karnataka need to invest in more renewable energy? So basically the first thing is that currently the state has a 14% energy deficit. Um, so, and due to this deficit, uh, we we have like around 11 lakh households which still don't have electricity. Um, and this, we also have constant outages and there's fluctuation. So basically, we don't have a stable electricity supply. Um, utilities are buying around 20%. So from the central generating units from outside of the state, uh, people are buying, I mean, 20% of our electricity is bought from outside. And this is quite expensive. It costs around 4,800 crores. Um, and finally, the last point why we really need RE is because the agricultural sector is um, spending, I'm sorry, I've written 48%, but that is 38% to 40% of electricity is by the agricultural sector and because in Karnataka uh, electricity is uh, subsidized, that means around 7,200 crores of subsidies going from the state. And uh, this, can, and because electricity is uh, free in the state, uh, we see that a lot of inefficient uh, pumps are being used and if we can replace these inefficient equipment with the uh, renewable energy solutions, and that would save the state a lot of uh, subsidies. So the objective was basically we wanted to find out what are the key barriers and challenges in the state to the growth of renewable energy. This spanned around 
three months of questionnaires and stakeholder interviews. Um, so we spoke to around um, 10 solar companies who had won bids in the state. We spoke to the state regulator. We spoke to people who work in rural energy. Um, I mean, then we also spoke with KERC, Cradle, like a lot of government as well as private organizations. We also spoke with the Indian Wind Power Association and bigger organizations who gave us their inputs. Based on, based on that, we found out the biggest challenge in the state is realizing the p potential. So although there is around uh, 18 gigawatt which has been allocated, that means that 18 gigawatt of projects are supposed to be in the pipeline. But out of these, only around 4.6 gigawatt has actually been commissioned. So we further investigated to see what is this. Why is it that although there are so many projects which are supposed to be commissioned, they are, they are not being. And this graph just shows us that uh, Karnataka has, compared to the rest of the states, which is Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Tamil Nadu, Karnataka has uh, fallen behind. And, okay, going on. So this is just to give you some resource-specific information. So over here we can see, I thought so this is very clear, but we, we have windmills just to show how the states have progressed. So in 2009, um, Karnataka was around the same as Maharashtra and Gujarat. But by 2014, Maharashtra and Gujarat have exceeded us by around 1,000 megawatts. And so, what we, so we have just tried to see what can be done. So, as we all know, that Karnataka is very good wind resource, um, and wind is also economically it's quite um, uh, competitive. But uh, there has been very slow progress, and we found out that the main reason for this is because it is uh, there. There is a lot of land which has been stalled. So there is a lot of land which has been allocated to the wind industry, but is not being used. And um, and then we also need to make investment zones, like smaller zones of two to three gigawatt, where people can set up their own wind farms. Uh, we we can improve the scheduling and forecasting, and also the existing wind sites can be repowered. And we also recommend it to promote the wind manufacturing industry in the state. Um, if we go to solar, in 2009, none of the states had any much solar. But by 2014, Gujarat and Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu have caught on. But Karnataka is still only around 60 um, megawatt, although we have the potential around 10,000. So Karnataka has a few schemes for this. One is the Surya Braita scheme where I was talking earlier about the irrigation pumps. So farmers can install these pumps in their fields and then whatever solar energy is being produced, whatever extra is being, they can uh, transfer this to the grid and get a tariff of about 9.56 rupees per unit. Uh, we have a similar scheme which is the rooftop scheme. And uh, so the new solar policy is quite effective, but we need to see how, how well it works. But what actions can be further taken is that we need to create solar parks similar to Rajasthan and Gujarat. We also need to find satellite data so that we can identify the suitable rooftops and we should encourage solar manufacturing in the state. Uh, Bioenergy Karnataka is doing very badly. Again, you can see that all the states have surpassed us. Gujarat, of course, is not doing that well, but Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu has surpassed us. And also in, in the state, as we know, there's a lot of waste to energy problems, but we can see that there is still no proper waste to energy policies. So therefore, we need to encourage state-level projects. We need to mandate regular data collection. And we should uh, encourage segregation. Um, also, for biomass projects, around 70 to 80 percent of the current biomass projects are un are not operational. Therefore, we need to encourage this by leasing out small land holdings for captive plantations. We need to undertake 
district wise uh, surveys and also the biomass tariffs need to be increased because right now they are too un economical so uh, i'll just go through quickly some of the points which we noticed were uh, facing i mean which was why we have a uh, challenge in karnataka so one is there is no single window clearance in the state so if you need to get your permits and clearances it is very hard you need to keep running from pillar to post so we have said we need to establish a single window clearance where investors can come and kind of say that these are the things which are going wrong with the with the projects we are not getting certain permits and clearances and they must have a place where they can get some uh, redressal for this um the second thing is land acquisition so land is a big problem in karnataka most of the people we spoke to said it was the biggest actually so uh, what we say is that we need to reallocate all the land which is already been allocated and then we also need to establish a better deemed land conversion then our open access in karnataka which means that selling from a private producer to a private consumer is quite hard i mean tamil nadu are has seen such a good growth because they have really good open access regulations we have quite high open access charges as well as going and getting the permits and all are a big issue um and also people don't know for how long the wheeling and banking charges are applicable and such things so we need more clarity on that then of course our grid infrastructure is quite good but we can increase it by ensuring that we augment those areas which are most congested um then okay so those were for the utility scale projects but of course uh, as land is a big issue we also want to encourage things like solar rooftop and smaller biomass plants so we say that there needs to be a state level re fund where we can uh, you know collect funds and then encourage through seed and tariffs or generation based in the in incentives and we also need to make more supportive policies as we already mentioned for things like small scale biomass plants waste to energy and things like that then lastly we had a look at the rural electricity supply and right now there is no state level rural electricity plan so we want the state to make a action plan for electrifying those 11 lakh households that we were speaking about um also one of the biggest reasons why rural electricity projects often don't work is because there is no skilled people in the countryside so there is no operation and maintenance so even if you go and install a plant there like there was a 40 crore ondp plant uh, i mean project which installed like 11 gasifiers and now i think only one of them is being used because the local people have no idea how to operate and maintain these things so the government needs to provide more support for these and the last one is to improve financial support so we should give them low interest loans uh, and we should also implement revenue subsidy models instead of capital subsidy ones and also in case in areas where there is no grid right now if there is a further grid extension we should make sure that those power plants also get some uh, compensation okay so that's about it thank you